which has been well lived and still going very strong. <laughs> many, many, many years ago, when I was very young, a young famous baseball player named Lou Gehrig announced to the country that he considered himself the luckiest man in the world. And I listened to him and he said it about family and friends. And he said it while he's gravely ill, had a terminal instinct, and I said to myself, that's impossible. There's no way I don't buy it, I don't get it. There's no way that this young man could feel, could feel that he's, he's lucky. But those thoughts stayed in the back of my mind. And 70 some odd years later, when I've had a lot of extra spare time to think and, and remember, I decided I'm going to check in my family with where I came from. So of course it starts with a mother and father who, who, who exposed me to all the wonders of the world that sustain me in my life today, right? My love of music, my love of dancing, of singing, of entertaining, my love of flowers, my love of family, and my love of tradition, right? And I shared that life with a brother and a sister who today, all of us in our 90s, give us that support and love and encouragement, right? And then there were the years that had school and work, and uh, I realized that I, I had, I was wondering how am I ever going to meet somebody that's going to love me and share a life with me, right? What all young people worry about. And then one day on a blind date, I get, I have a blind date and I met a guy. And what a guy. And what a guy. And, guy. and this guy was handsome and very fresh. But together we had a connection and we formed a true partnership. And we decided to make a life for each other that would be exciting, creative, challenging, loving, fighting, everything that was to get, but as long as we did it together, it was okay. And we traveled, went to all the wonderful countries and the cities, and we lived in Hong Kong for three years, right? And in that traveling, I met a couple who said to me, Marsha, you and Bob have been together many, many, many years, and you're always up and you're always laughing. In those years, did you ever, ever consider divorce? And I said, divorce? I said, absolutely not. Murder men. <laughs> to have a family. Oh, I thought to tell you that in, in the traveling, uh, we did everything in great style, right? And we lived in very luscious, one sharing. It was always sharing, always together. And then we decided it's time to have a family. So together, the two partners made three children. Gifted, talented, Kind. I forgot kind. <laughs> kind. And I shared their life with them. And in sharing their life, they kept me young. They kept me young and nervous and worried and sleepless. <laughs> but it was okay. Because in that sharing, I got to share the lives of all of his, their friends, all of them growing up. And that was okay with me because I loved every minute of it. Right? And then these children grew up, met their partners, and they brought into my life additional children to love and share and see and grow together. And eventually they brought me five grandchildren. Needless to say, and I'm not grading, the most special, the most gifted, the most beautiful, right? I'm not going to bore you with that, right? And I remember my mother saying to me, Marsha, the two best things happened to me tonight. My grandchildren came and my grandchildren left. <laughs> so she said, so she said me, your role now is to love them, encourage them, spoil them, hug them, listen to their stories, listen to their problems, and then send them home to their parents and let them raise them. <laughs> so I did. It was good advice, right? And then I'm looking around and I see all my nieces and nephews here nieces and nephews who come to visit me here in California 
They come, they stay with me, they hang out with me. Can you imagine hanging out with the old lady? <laughs> they come for me to tell them what it was like in the olden days, what their parents were like in the olden days. So amongst my many stories, I come up with some, telling them with humor, so that when I tell them, we can laugh and share together, right? In our many years, Rob and I, we lived in many different places. Oh, I know, in the sharing with my nieces and nephews, I gave them their past, they kept me in the present, and my grandchildren dragged me into the future. The future are the computers, oy vey, that's all I have. And then I, in my travels, I moved to different places, and I gathered together neighbors, and I'm looking at them now, wonderful neighbors, and so I shared their lives, and they're raising their children, and I was always amazed at how similar families are when you're raising a family, right? And so we laugh together, we, we could comfort each other, they watch over me, they could they take care of me, and for that I'm very grateful. Then I'm looking and I see some old friends, right? And I say, when I meet them, I say, what's new? I want them to tell me what's exciting, what have you done, what have you seen, where are you going, what places have you seen, right? And I smile because those were very good times, they were happy times, right? And then I see my new friends that I meet at the senior center. And when I say to them, what's new? I'm really saying, is your pacemaker working? And I laugh because I'm sharing, I'm sharing my aches and pains with you. And then we are lucky to have dinner together or a birthday dinner. When we go out to a restaurant, I have no problem with the menu because by now I know if I like it, I can't have it. <laughs> so I start to look at what was, what was, and what is. And again, I laugh, right? Because inside this old person is a young person who's saying, "What the hell happened? <laughs> where did it all go?" So I'm going to bring you right up to the prison where we go, where I've come to many conclusions. I've seen it all. I've had it all. I've seen a lot, not all. I've had a lot, I've seen a lot, and I've survived a lot. And I've survived it with mountains of love and kindness and, and coping and courage and laughter, right? And while I'm standing, which I should be standing, but I'm not, <laughs> while I'm standing, I'm still vertical, right? <laughs> and I have many goals yet to conquer. I am determined to find the perfect bra and the right job. <laughs> I know for sure. <laughs> Mr. Garrett, I accept it, I understand it, I, I, I get it. It was very possible for you to feel so lucky at that awful time in your life because I too, in spite of the, I have the laughter and the tears, I have the ups and the downs, I have the fun and the not so fun, and having lived a life of miracles and still looking for that next miracle, I do feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. <laughs>